Hi there and welcome to another ADSR video for Yuhi Zebra. Mark here, as usual. I don't know if you guys have been watching the Zebra tutorials, uh, sorry, the Absinthe tutorials that I've just started doing. Now last week I kind of done one that's the starting of a kind of series, a little series of videos that I'm going to start doing regarding how to make soundscapes and evolving soundscapes, things like that. Now, if you didn't, go to um, absinthetutorials.com, I'll put the link there on the screen, and check it out. I'm going to do, I'm going to start doing the same with Zebra as well, so that's pretty much what I'm going to be aiming to do today. We're going to start, obviously it's just going to be, we're just going to start with four bars here. Now, I'm going to get, I'm going to, finally, the, the evolving kind of soundscape that I'm going to make is going to be a lot longer and a lot more interest, and this is just to um, help you get the fundamentals down of how this kind of sound is created, and then we'll move on from there. So let's get on with it. Now we're going to start with three oscillators, and I'm only the reason I'm using three oscillators is because that's kind of what um, I done in Absinthe. Now. It is going to be kind of boring at first because we're just trying to get the fundamentals down but we're going to see where we can take this, where we can go with it. Not with really any kind of idea as such in mind. I'm not trying to create an evolving soundscape for a horror movie or um, a chewing gum advert or something like that. I'm just trying to get you guys to see how these sounds are created. So what I've basically got is just C3, four bars long. So at the moment we'll have whatever is on oscillator 1, which is obviously a saw wave, because it's using the default patch. Now, we'll just leave it at that, or shall we change it? Shall we change it? We'll, we'll leave it at that for the now, but I'm going to drop the tuning by an octave. And... Right, I'm just going to leave it at that for the time being. No, you know what? No, I'm not, because it is a tad boring. Um, let's get some bells in there. Okay, that will do. It's a bit more interesting. And we'll drop that by an octave. Uh, oscillator 2. Let's add something a wee bit more different to that as well. Um, that'll do. That's kind of cool. And oscillator 3. What else have we got? What's that? Oops, my fault. I just changed oscillator 2 to that, so we'll change oscillator 3 to that. So that should be that. Will be the one that I wanted. Okay, and oscillator 1. Okay, so oscillator 2. Yeah, there's there's modulation on oscillator two already. We don't really want that, so I'm just going to remove any and all modulations that we don't want. Basically, what happened there is this um, had LFO modulating between the two to give it um, some sound. We don't want that. I don't want to get into anything complex at the moment with regards to that stuff. So the tuning on oscillator two. Is right then we'll leave it at that because it's fundamentally a part of the sound and oscillator 3 looks like it's got some tuning on it as well okay so we'll just leave it like that so all three of them together it's quite a strange sound so Let's see what we can do by utilising the MSEGs as an amplitude envelope. Now, what we'll probably do here is play on notes so that it moves along at the same speed. And to show you that, I'll just right click there, loop start, and we'll leave the loop end there, and it's up to number 5. So what I'll do is I'll just hold down Alt and left click, get rid of those for the time being. Up number 5. So one, two, three, four, five. Let's see if that runs in unison. 
obviously have to do something to modulate first so we might as well just put the modulation in place so just click on mixer on all three drop the volumes and we'll just work on oscillator one at the moment MSEG one which is what this is so if I press play two three four five so you can see that's running in exact unison with the timing on here which is good okay <clears throat> excuse me so we're just going to create a basic amplitude envelope like what we did in absinthe and in this instance it's just going to be a straightforward ramp up that's all oh sorry we're working on oscillator one aren't we i'm not really with it today <laughs> Okay, so there it is. Now, because that's the deeper sound of the three, I'm going to use, I'm just going to create a few little bits and bobs with this. As you'll see, that I, I, like I've done in the Absinthe video again, I'm just going to really use this to create like a little pattern as such. Put that onto there. Alt, right click, get some more nodes up, that one there, that one there maybe, put that one up, and to do what I just done there, I just double click anywhere and it makes the envelope the size of the window that we're looking at, okay, I'm just going to left click and just drag these to how I want them, because I want them to be relatively quick, maybe we could put that one a little bit closer to that one, maybe. And again, it's just amplitude, remember, it's just an amplitude envelope. Do we really want a long one? Yeah, why not? Again, we'll make it come down pretty quick. Okay, this one, just like that. And we'll just remove that one. Make that curve up. I know it doesn't sound very interesting, but there you go. Now we'll go on MSEG2 and we'll just create just a basic ramp up, really, like this. And we'll use that for oscillators 2 and 3. Oh, wait a minute, that shouldn't be there. It should be there. Right, let's hear how it sounds. Okay, obviously, you need to be consistent, so put that to notes. Okay, it doesn't sound very interesting, I know, but you're getting the principles here, so now what we've got it's three oscillators with very different sounds that are being ramped up over time, hence the reason that this would be used for like an evolving soundscape or something like that. Um, maybe in a like an intro of your tune or like this is how you would create kind of like ramp ups and ramp downs and stuff as well. But we're not getting it intricate here at all, you know, we've only got this little just a little it's, it's nothing really there's nothing really special about it. I'm just using that to show you that you can use an envelope to make a sound kind of stand out. Now what I'm going to do is just put them all back in linear fashion and put a filter in. Now let's hear what this filter does to the sound. Probably use like a band pass. Let's use the res. But I will use uh, MSEG1 to control the cutoff as well. So hopefully that will give it a, an added piece of interest with the filter cutoff.
Okay, and what I'll probably do... Oh, in fact, I'll just leave it there. Okay, so you should be able, you should be starting to pick up the principles of what's going on here. We've selected a specific amount of time, in this case it's four bars. And over those four bars we're using envelopes, in this instance, on the filter cutoff and the volume, so amplitude, to create something that's changing over time. Now it's not changing over time a great deal at the moment because it's just a very basic ramp and one of these little kind of almost rhythmic type patterns. But hopefully that will give you some idea as to how these sounds are created. Now, just to add a piece of interest, if I pop in maybe a delay and a reverb, perhaps, and let's have a look at the delay, we'll mix it right up, we'll put that into quarter dots and eight dots, see how that sounds. <laughs> Now maybe the reverb was making it too distant there, so you could maybe just pop the reverb on a return and mess around with that. Okay, so we'll leave it at that for this video. Over, I don't really know, they won't be like every Monday or every Wednesday or every Tuesday or whatever. I'll just pop them in every now and again. But they'll, I'll try and get one done at least every week, if not every two weeks, for this little evolving soundscape little mini-series that I'm going to try and get going. And hopefully we'll end up with something that's much, much, much more complex and much more interesting. Also, just before I forget, you could, if you want, you could add an LFO to create some additional modulation and do it maybe via the modulation wheel. And and you could do that for things like the oscillator or the filter. Let's just do it on the filter cutoff in this instance. So let's have a listen to that. <laughs> Now that's me just turning the modulation wheel up. So you get the idea. So that's another little level. But anyway, I hope you got some interest out of this and learnt something. And we'll definitely keep going with this and we'll see how complex we can really get with this kind of thing. And uh, hopefully give you some um, ideas as to how to create these types of soundscapes for, well, pretty much any kind of music, ambient stuff, but like I, I, I really like to use this kind of thing as intros to my tracks and stuff. Okay, hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching.